Trumpy doesn't like tapes. No, we can't afford any more outtakes. Right. Hello and welcome to Brandex Reviews and our Halloween marathon. We're up to night four now. Yes, yeah, so this will be Thursday. Uh, this goes out and uh, previous three videos we talked about found footage films. That's the theme for this. We talked about the last broadcast. And then there was uh, Blair Witch 1 and 2. This one we're going to talk about mostly the Paranormal Activity franchise, but also a few other films because... I don't know if you'd agree with this. Mm -hmm. uh, there was like found footage was kind of big for a while, like around Blair Witch. Yeah, they, they did died. a lot of films after the Blair Witch, thinking they could get away with the same format, like shaking the camera around a lot, no money, no um, effects, and somehow make a fortune, even if it was like really poorly done. And it very quickly got a hugely bad reputation with people as, oh, that found found footage films are just awful. I think a lot of it was like parodies as well, mm. and uh, I'm not even joking here, but like porn as well, like, yes. you know, that kind of thing. The erotic witch project, yeah, stuff like that. And, and there was there was a there's literally a porn parody of the Blow, which that came out as recently as like 2010. Yes, it's still kind of ongoing, but mm. it kind of died. Like I say, would you kind of agree with that? Like for a few years, at least five years, it kind of died. There wasn't really anything big. Anyway. Yeah, and then it certainly one of the. Um, Thoughts from the time is like nobody could ever really top the Blair Witch. It was kind of the pinnacle. You couldn't really get that kind of effect again. You couldn't get that kind of um, out, not exactly outcry, but um, well, the success kind of mania and the success yeah. that it generated. But yeah, I mean, there was there was that. I think it really came back around at the time of. Um, if we've got we've got some here, some examples. There was um, Cloverfield. That was a massive one when it came out. That really kind of mm. brought it back. Yeah, um, that one. It was kind of interesting because it, it wasn't done on no budget. Though it had the found footage Clint. to it, it had like a huge budget and it had special effects and half crushed buildings. It was basically a monster film done from the ground up as a found footage. Um, I personally, I think I liked it more than you did because you kind of went off it on repeat viewings. Yeah, th since, since then I've just found it a bit boring, but I think what really brought it back was Paranormal Activity. There was one yeah, it came out um, the year before Cloverfield did Paranormal Activity. Yeah, well it was it was made, it was shot in 2006, it was kind of um, limited release in mm. 2007. And it wasn't really until 2009, late 2009, sort of Halloween time, when... Um, yeah, I actually got like a really mainstream cinema release. It was bought, the rights were bought, I think it was a Universal or something. Yeah. Um, and every it year suddenly since... just seemed to kind of explode into like the public consciousness and like suddenly everybody was talking about it. But we'll get to them in a minute. Um, which one of the other ones you wanted to... Well, I think that was it for the up to that stage, you know, and there was some yeah. after that. But we'll, we'll talk about Paranormal yeah. just for a bit. I mean, the thing with this was, it was, it was 2009 when it got a mainstream release, and I think that was around at the time when the Saw films, you were pretty much having a Saw film every year, and this really kind of killed, not killed the franchise, but this was the new kind of successful horror film that they would put out one a year, which we've had mm. ever since, it was like one pretty much every 12 months or so. Um, I mean, it's kind of, I think four was pretty much like the low point, but we'll get to that, we'll just kind of talk through them. Yeah, the moment we we'll we'll start with uh, one. It was something that apparently Steven Spielberg had a big thing to do with actually getting this film like a mainstream release because he had a lot of good things to say about it. And um, I mean, I've, I've read certain things like apparently he, like really shit himself when he was like watching it and he couldn't watch like the whole film until like the next day, like you day. <laughs> like I don't know how true that is. That's just kind of it might be a myth actually. It's one of those things where a lot of myths you have probably grown up around it. Um... I remember seeing it a couple of years after it had been released, because I think Paranormal Activity 3 had come out before I actually saw Paranormal Activity 1. Yeah. I mean, I saw them all in order, but that's how late into the franchise I got into it. Because um, I actually have... Um, that's the only one I've bought, because it was kind of cheap, and I was interested in seeing what all the um, hype was about. Yeah, I mean, I saw number two first, um, Saturday night, and a friend of mine, she uh, she was just like, oh, do you fancy going to the cinema <laughs> in like an hour? And it was like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I was like, yeah, go on then if your driver's there. Mm. Uh, so I kind of read up on what happens in the first one. The second one he set before, technically, most of it is anyway, so it was fine. But, um, yeah, I just remember that night watching the second one and just coming home literally at two in the morning. And it was Saturday night and I was like, I was just to my friend, I was like, serious, I don't want to go home like on my own. It wasn't like a, a ploy to get into bed or anything. <laughs> it was like, I don't want to go home on my own. And... Uh, and she was like, yeah, you can go to Strata, which is like this local nightclub. And I was like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I'd rather go home and be 
on me own and get like menaced by a demon and catch a VD off some tramp. But um, yeah, that was that really shit me up. Did that? It wasn't just shit me up watching it, but I would mm. think about the film for like weeks when I was like at home on my own, like in bed. Yeah, I had like a similar. Um, react. I mean, I was, wasn't quite the. I don't want to go home because I watched it at home, so I didn't really have that. But um, definitely, when I was trying to go to bed that night, it would be like replaying bits of it in my head, thinking. Jesus, that was creepy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to see the first one at the, at the cinema, unfortunately, but the second and third I did. Mm. Uh, four I didn't, and the marked ones, we, we did a review of that already. But Yeah, I was going to say, that's the only one I've seen, actually, at the cinema, was yeah. the marked ones. It's a, it's a really good experience watching these at cinema as well, because usually, I, mean, I know you hate it when like, people are making a noise, but something like this, their reactions really kind of, it just builds an atmosphere that you don't usually get in a, in a cinema. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind stuff like that. It's when it's like, <laughs> like the monkey noises from the back it's like oh for god's sakes well we had to, <clears throat> when I had to see the second one there was like um, there was a group of like guys like sort of fairly big guys that were there like sat on their own and there were some girls as well and it was actually the guys not the <laughs> girls that were literally like jumping and like screaming kind of not like to just be noisy but they were like genuinely like proper like ah kind of thing and girls were like telling them to shut up and they were like but no, you sure, but it's fucking scary. Like, I just said to my friend Natalie, and I was just like, two films for the price of one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the third one in particular, well, that was um, the, the third film, that was a real experience at the cinema because uh, there were literally there were girls in tears watching it. There were people like running out of the cinema. I just like couldn't Yeah, I think it. the third one would be kind of a. That's my favourite. Yeah, it? I would say sort of the high point of the franchise. Yeah, a lot of people don't like these films. They're just, oh, it's rubbish, it's a door. What's scary about a door opening? Like you said in first review, it's yeah. what's behind the door that's scary. And that's what your imagination provides. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk about the the films themselves. Yeah. Um, they didn't really have quite as much hype as the Blair Witch reached. They didn't quite get that big. But damn close. I mean, there wasn't like a game franchise spun off of Paranormal Activity. True. There weren't a series of novels... I think the closest it's got, I think there was a web comic um, for Paranormal Activity. Really? But, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, apparently. Oh, right. um, I think it was like on like mobile devices or something. You yeah, can get it. I can imagine that. And um, there have been like, so many parodies, like really retarded, like shitty parodies of Paranormal Activity. Yeah. And there's Paranormal Entity, the kind of asylum ripoff. Oh, God. <laughs> But yeah, basically what Paranormal Activity did, it went back to the things that worked about the Blair Witch. But it didn't just take away the, oh, we can make this with no money and then make a fortune from it. It went back to, right, let's look at what we can do to like provide something that's scary, that can build an atmosphere that's quite... How do I put it? Um, quite ingenious. And like, it leaves you wondering, like, Man, how did they do that? Was that CGI? You know, how, how exactly did they manage that? Yeah, because I'm left with my head, sort of scratching my head kind of thing. Mm. Thinking. One other thing they did, you kind of mentioned Paralysis and Blair Witch, I'll just throw out. They also did the thing where you have the same character name as the actor's name, because it was Katie and Mika, one mm. uh, there. Those were the names of the actors in the films. So they kind of echoed the Blair Witch again there. Also, the um, classic, like, in the trailer, will show you, like, scenes from the cinema shot with night vision of people going, ah! Yeah. <laughs> That's so the Blair Witch, they ripped that off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was like 10 years, pretty much. I know, like I said, it was made in 2006. It was kind of limited release in 2007. So it was another two years. One thing I read, again, I don't know how true this is, but the studio that actually bought the rights after it was kind of an independent doing its thing, and, you know, um, the studio that bought the rights apparently were talking about remaking it instead of actually releasing it and like doing a bigger budget one and then having mm. the, the version we know now as just an extra on the disc. I just can't help but think if they'd have done that they wouldn't have done as good a job kind of thing. It'd have been kind of, and people would have said, mm. well actually the, the, the version itself. It'd be like El Mariachi and Desperado. Not, mm. Is it Desperado? Yeah. And that kind of thing where it's like a remake of, of the film. Because you often get those films together, don't you? It's like, well, yeah, I have both. It's a kind of rubbishy original one and then the one that the bigger budget of the same film released together. Yeah, but in this case, I think it's one of the, one of the things of less money makes the more creative, kind of like Halloween or The Blair Witch. Um, in some ways, the lack of budget makes them kind of rise to the occasion and do something 
different rather than just having like oh CGI monster here to like scare you and make you go oh. Yeah, well, uh, that was the first one anyway. I know mm -hmm. that on the DVD, and I don't think the Blu ray is any different because I have considered like grading. Um, there are three endings that I know of, two of them on the DVD, one isn't. I don't know if you've even seen the other one. It's, I've seen it online. I think I've seen all three of them, but I know they're all like they're all kind of similar, but they're all different in. Yeah, because there's one where the, just the one in this cinema where your guy gets thrown at the camera. What's the other one? I can't remember what the other one is. There's the one. Um, I think there's one where you see her commit suicide, and there's one where the cops yeah. come in and kill her. That's it. Yeah, there's one where she cuts her throat. That's on the DVD as well. But yeah, there's the other one where the cops come in and shoot her. That's not on the DVD, as far as I know, unless it's hidden. Um. Again, I think it was Spielberg that had something to do with recommending which ending to to go with. I don't know. Like, again, how true that is, which ending he actually recommended. But apparently he was had some input in that. But definitely keeping her alive is the ending officially that moves on into the other films. Um, Kate, Katie was it? Yeah, was Katie, survived. yeah. So the second one we've got, uh, it's a story about her sister. Mm -hmm. um, Kind of yeah, her now. sister was mentioned in the first one, and you see her at one point, because you hear that this stuff has happened before to the family, so it's kind of backstory to the first one, and then they actually like went into it in a lot of detail in the second one. Um, this film does up the ante. Um, on the first one, you see a little bit more, um, a little bit more happens in it. Yeah. This is an extended <clears throat> cut on DVD as well, which was the same on Blu-ray, so again, there was no real advantage getting the Blu-ray from what I get anyway. Um, again, this was the first one I saw in the cinema, and yeah, really, even watching it on repeated viewings, the effect of it really is kind of, you know... Well, this is the first one I saw with the Ukes, um, the original one I saw <laughs> yeah, with the Telephone. Yeah, like, brilliant, <laughs> like jumping Yeah, well, I'm, I'm always like that, it's kind of... I watched this with a girl once, and I remember she was, like, kind of, like, lying lying across me because she was, like, scared kind of thing, and she was, like, she said, I could, like, feel your heart, like, beating, like, when it's, like, proper, like, scary. So, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, they managed to do... I mean, the dog in Paranormal Activity 2 was also really good. They managed yeah, really to get, like... Yeah, um, yeah it, it really sells some of the scenes, how the dog's acting. Yeah. Um, and they do say that like, animals can be really hard to like get, like to do what you want. So yeah. they had either a really well trained dog or a really well, really good like handler or both. Yeah, I think they did a lot of stuff like off camera <clears> to <throat> get the dog to do certain things. Because you can see like one bit where it gets like yanked, doesn't it? And it wouldn't be that difficult to pull off that effect, but the dog does kind of. The dog was quite, you know, <laughs> did presumably did exactly as he was told. But I know in the first one, it was a very independent film. There wasn't so much of a script. They just kind of said, like, guidelines. Like, we want you to have an argument about, like, um, him... Yeah, I guess going back to the um, Blair Witch again. Yeah. With the second one, it felt a bit more scripted. It was a bit, like, more studio. Yeah, you one. had the father, you had uh, the mother, the daughter, the little baby and the dog. were Like, the, yeah, the main focal points. Do you see um, Mike and Katie... One. Yes, they come to yeah. visit every now and again. Because again, it's got the, the kind of continuity between the first two films. In the first film, you see the sister and the references to like all oh, weird stuffs happened before. Do you see the sister? I don't think you see the sister. In the first I thought one, no, I'm pretty sure she shows up for a scene. No, I think she was like introduced in the second one. You see the, the you see Katie, the sister, in the second one. And she comes to visit. Uh, well, at some point, well, like, I think she's it, mentioned. She I think I think we'll I think we'll just go one of these cases where we have to like watch it and then like yeah. discuss it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she. Because anyway, this is going to be like the how does he kill the tarantula in um, Doctor No? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean that was that was the second one. Like I said, they've, they've obviously upped it a bit. Mm -hmm. We'll just move on to the third one. Yeah. Yeah, this is the only one you've got on um, Blu-ray. Was there any reason for that? Or yeah, just, uh... the extended cut is Blu-ray only from memory. That's why I got it on that. So I usually like to have a consistent series of things, but um, something like that. I was going to ask why that was the only one you had on Blu-ray, because yeah. I know you kind of tend to stick to one. Yeah, I mean, the third one, like I said, that was the, it's my favourite film. It might not be the best film, because I know a lot of people say that they got worse at the fourth. The first one was the best one, but um, it might be... I... Really like the third one. Yeah, it just did so it had... clever stuff. Also, another thing I'll say about Paranormal Activity, which cuts into like the heart of the found footage um, films when they work, is that you need to be able to suspend your disbelief just enough to go along with the film. And the more um, kind of realistic the um, excuse for having like a lot of filming going on, 
the more your brain's willing to go along with a lot of the other stuff that's happening. I mean, for example, when it's something like, was it Diary of the Dead, where they're just camcording for the sake of it, and it would make no sense for you to be carrying a camcorder at that yeah. point. It kind of takes you out of the reality of it. However, in Paranormal Activity, some of the first three films, they have very good reasons in each film for why they're recording. I mean, in the first one, it's as simple as weird stuff's been happening and Michael wants to get it on tape so he can put it on YouTube or whatever. Which, I'm sorry, is a very believable like yeah. rationale. A lot of people didn't seem to like Mike or thought he was a bit of a dick. But I kind of agree with... Um, He's realistic, though. Yeah, I agree with... Um, I think it was Spoonie that, in one of his reviews, that said... Um, sort of, in his place, I could see myself doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm the man bit, of the house. I, I, I'm, 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 a bit, I'm a bit of a dick like that as well. Yeah, like getting a Ouija board and stuff. So it's I like, know um, the Spoonie experiment's done a lot of the paranormal activities because he was a big fan. Yeah, up till number four, which we are going to get yeah, to. Yeah, um, I, I, can, I can agree with him on that one. Yeah, because um, I think with the third one as well, a lot of people just didn't like it because um, they said that it got too like big budget or all that kind of stuff. Because it did have CGI in it, like... The bit where the girl's hair gets yanked up. And yeah, so but that. I thought those effects worked really well. Yeah, it was I mean, really like I said, the first one was, oh, we're just going to record it for the sake of it. The second one was, somebody broke into the house, so we're going to have, like, closed circuit TV in case they do it again. In the third one, it's a guy um, recording on VHS. He's like, it's basically set in the 80s. Or... Yeah, it's in the 80s. It's yeah. for the same reason as the, as the, the first one, isn't it? It's filming because of paranormal stuff. Yeah, although the rationale for it is he's a wedding photographer who's so got all these like um, camcorders just lying around, which you wouldn't have usually had back in like the early eighties. You wouldn't really have had all that, but he did. Cause he did perfect. because it's his job. You know, it makes sense. And some of the stuff they do, like they have one camera set up and they show how they basically made this panning camera. It was a fan, wasn't it? It was yeah. like a, just an electric fan and he kind of adjusted it to mount a camera and he does that. And they really like use that too. It's fun. Yeah, because one of the most um, like successful scenes is uh, the two girls, because it's basically about when um, Katie and her sister are like little girls. And like this is how it kind of starts in a way. And um, they want to play, like, dress up with these sheets, like, pretending to be a ghost. And you basically see the babysitter kind of sat at a table, and you see a small figure, like, walk up behind her with a sheet over it. Well, it just appears, doesn't it? it didn't even, you well, well, you, well you do, it, it's implied walked, or yeah, it appears. Yeah. Kind of because it's panning, you don't really know. Um, and it's just, like, standing behind her, you thinking, like, is that one of the girls? Is that the ghost? What's going to happen? Like, is she going to turn around? It's quite tense. And then just as she's about to turn around, the, cap, the sheet just falls flat to the ground and there's nothing under it. And you're like, how the fuck did they manage that? You mean how did they film it? Yeah, I've thought that. I, I'm assuming it was CGI, mm. but... I'm actually thinking it might have been practical, like, you know, some like wires or something. It could have been a balloon, like a, a long mm. balloon with a, a sheet over it and you've got somehow just like, just a stick a pin in it and just like edit out the sound in the, in the mm. dub. <laughs> there's you mean that or like fishing wire or something like supporting the top of it you'd have like a little thing in it that make it like a head yeah and then when you just like release the wires it just falls down but like I say it looks really good and it is like a whoa scene that was scary that and it wasn't a, a like a jumpy thing I mean it, it did have a, a kind of a thing to it but it wasn't like a bang kind of thing I mean usually when Paranormal Activity has a jump scare at least up to this point it's usually when the kind of joking around like the second film where they got the pool cleaner it's like guys 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 come come look at this come look at this look what's happening on like going dad what the hell is it and then he's got the pool cleaner and just jumps straight out of the pool at them and they're like son of a how dare you what well, the hell are you playing each, at in each film they'll have the prank which is usually somebody mm. playing a prank like or there's like there's like a scream they go upstairs and it's like somebody's shit out of the bog okay? or there's a spider or somebody's mm -hmm. hiding in a cupboard and they come out you know, it's pretty well done in the first three because it doesn't feel too cheesy. <laughs> yeah, the fourth film was just really bad. Was it even made by the same people? We'll get on to the fourth yeah. film in a second. <laughs> um, the other thing in the third one that I loved, again, which was using the oscillating mm -hmm. camera, uh, was the bit where the woman, go, the mother goes in, turns to the door and she comes back, everything in the kitchen's gone, and then it just drops from like yeah. the room. That was like the best I mean, we, we could go on for ages talking about all our favourite bits because there are yeah. so many good bits where it's just like, that's quite creepy, and this is why. And again, it's because it's in somebody's home. This could happen. This happened in their home. It could happen in your home. 
and they can't get away from it. It's even like um, brought up, like, why don't they just move out? It's like, if they moved out, it's just going to follow them. It's hooked onto them, not the blades. It's a bit like Poltergeist, mm. the film, kind of. Yeah, also, the third one had um, quite a lot of nostalgic said stuff like, they have a Teddy Ruxpin at one point, and they had yeah, like, the light a bright light bright, which I used to have a, a light <laughs> bright as well. Um, a few little things like that. Which was, um, the, you like nice little touches for people who would notice that kind of thing. There was that symbol first appeared as well, I think, in that one. He's got the triangle yeah. with the... Uh, they, is it shown somewhere else? Today? Yeah, I was going to say is that he's holding it up in that, isn't he? Well, a friend of mine that I went to see the, the, the second and third one with uh, played a prank on me as well because uh, that symbol would like appear and that. And then I would watch the film, like we'd come home and I'd gone to bed. In the morning, I came downstairs and she'd like drawn this fucking thing and put it through my letterbox. Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, there was, there was stuff like that. So the third was a really good experience in the cinema. I just love it. I mean, I know a lot of people, if they didn't have the same vibe with it, they're not going to like it. But I thought the third one really was the, like, the high point. I mean, usually when it's got CGI or a jump scare, it's earned it because it's pretty late on in the film and it's built up a lot of atmosphere and goodwill. So by the time that comes along, you're willing to go ahead with the jump scare. And, you know, it's not just been a film of like one jump scare after another after another. We should just literally wait every five seconds for somebody to go... You know, at you, which is really annoying in some films. Yeah. Right? It's just nothing but that. It was good the third one was because it was dealing with something they hadn't really done before, and that was creepy mm -hmm. little girls, which they hadn't really done in this franchise before. And each one kind of did something different. Um, do you want to move on to the fourth one? Cause, uh, yeah, well, well, let's, let's talk about the fourth oh, one. God, do we have to? <laughs> um, do we see this for the first no. time, or did you see yeah, this before? I didn't see this in the cinema, and I was like pissed off at the time. It was just, I, I can't remember what happened, I think there were a lot of films out at the time. But, um, yeah, we went, I, I got it, I think somebody downloaded it and brought it around, and, um, terrible film, seriously. That's your punishment, watching a downloaded movie. Yeah, well I did buy it, to be fair, I mean, I, I uh, when it came out I did get it, and... Um, Proof? Yeah. Although this does look a bit fake, you know, maybe this is a... It, joking, it, it, joking, this is real. No, no, it is pirated, it looks like it's been filmed on a camera. I can't no! But yeah, really terrible YouTube film. is so taking down this video. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, um, it's just full of jump scares, and they're not earned, and that's all it's got going for And it. also, the first three films, like we've mentioned, have like an internal continuity. Of like, we'll mention something, and then the next one we'll go into that in more detail. And we find out that, yes, they were haunted as little girls because this is what happened in the third one. It makes sense. It's links together. The second one, although it's set before the first one, it also continues the plot on beyond the second one because the very final scenes of Paranormal Activity 2 are actually set after the original Paranormal Activity because you see Katie again, which is why it's definitely from that ending. Katie didn't get shot by the police. Katie didn't commit suicide. Katie's still out there and possessed. A major failing of Paranormal Match 34 for me is they took a step back. Makes no sense. Yeah, the, the plot just broke. At the end of the second one, Katie had gotten hold of the baby from the family in Paranormal Activity 2. She had the kid... I mean, I don't really class that as a spoiler because you're not really watching it for the plot as much as you're watching it for the scares. and You know, it's, it's not something that would spoil it going in, I don't think. But yeah, she's got the baby. In Paranormal Activity 4, she's trying to get the kid. It's like, uh, you got her, the, you got him at the end of Paranormal Activity 2. What, did you immediately give him up for adoption? What, what the hell? <laughs> and now you're getting him back? You're like, what? Like, what the hell happened here? Dozy fucking demon possessed people that just can't seem to... Well, like I, said, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a case of a rewrite, like originally... This isn't actually the baby she wanted in the second one because there was a mix up at the hospital and even though she gets to the end of the second one it's not the baby oh, she nice. wanted. Doesn't make so sense. she goes out again. Or was she just not wanting to raise it because she was a demon possessed like monster. So she gave him to another family to raise it but then why is she so desperate to suddenly get it back? It doesn't make any sense. I think there were a lot of directions we were going to go, because especially the trailer for number three had... I think the majority of what you see in the trailer for Paranormal Activity 3 wasn't actually in the film. Yeah, they have variations of it, because there's like the um, game of Bloody Mary, where you say Bloody Mary three times in the mirror and she appears. And they do write really creepily in the film. But the 
bitch you'll see of that from the trailer aren't actually in the film. Yeah, it's like an alternative. Yeah, because there's the two little girls like playing like Bloody Mary, and uh, one of them jump scares the other one like bah! and she's like ah and like runs out screaming and she laughs and like follows her out, and then you see there was something else in there with them, and you're like. Oh shit, that isn't actually in the film, that's just for the trailer. Yeah, they replaced it with a scene where it's the babysitter and the older sister, Katie, and then, mm -hmm. but in the extended scene, in the extended cut, there is another scene which is similar to them, the two sisters doing it, and the door slams, mm -hmm. which isn't as effective, but it's still alright. But also, in the first two films, there was, there was always the talking about the time when the house burned down when they were kids, mm. and I thought that they were going to go back to that, and it did show in the trailer a house on fire, so I thought, oh great, you'll get to see the whole thing about the house burning down. There's none of that in the third film, which was... Yeah, you just kind of assume that they, the cult went and burned the house at some point um, after the third film. Yeah. Well, there, there actually, because you see that in the, the, the mm. fifth one. We didn't review the fifth one like separately, so we don't really have to go into that as such. But. Yeah, I mean, technically we were saying, yeah, this, as far as we're concerned, this is the fifth one. But no, they are definitely doing a Paranormal Activity 5. So what I'm going to suggest is, yeah, book that. This, this is, is Paranormal Activity 4. <laughs> At this point, it was, I liked the marked ones. I didn't think it was particularly scary, but it was Yeah, that was its greatest flaw, is that it wasn't scary. I mean, there's some jumps in it, but the at no point good. does it really scare you. But I liked it nevertheless. It was funny as well. It's something that I could go back and watch. People have said, oh, it's stupid, they wouldn't record all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they would. You've got, you've, got, you've, got, you've got a camcorder, like, when ages ago. And it was 18. the sort with, like, had tapes, for God's sakes. Back in 2000. Yeah, and we recorded all kinds of dumb crap. And it was nowhere near as compact or as portable as this one that they have is. Yeah. If we had one like that, we would record all kinds of dumbass shit. We got, we've got, like... An entire New Year's like on tape. We just filmed an entire yeah. just us just sitting around playing cars and just having a laugh and stuff. Are you, are you happy? happy? I'm, I'm happy. Right, I've got a king honey, that's shit. Okay, I've got two pairs. That's good, isn't it? Oh, you got six cards! <laughs> no! Jesus! <laughs> 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 oh, no. Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that worked! <laughs> Don't go out, that would be cool. Green flame. I'm uh, suitably impressed with that one. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so interested! Like, for, pos <laughs> for posterity. So, that these people with like a fancy, um, like small, like hands-free video camera won't be filming everything. Bullshit, they would. And we're still filming, by the way. Is it yeah, flashing? still flashing. Don't worry, we're still filming, just like they would be. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's one good thing. Like I say, there's the like Chris Carter always said when he was doing the X Files. It's only scary is it's believable. And I know this isn't the X Files, but it's similar mm -hmm. principle is stuck to. If you can keep it believable, at least bits of it. Like, why are they filming all this? Well, I say I've, I've heard it described like a magic trick, and it is kind of true. You need to keep things at least grounded enough in reality and like common sense that you're not immediately taken out from it. Because if you're already taken out by like the, well, why the hell are they filming this? Where the hell is this camera? What the hell is going on? Then by the time you get to the weird supernatural stuff that can't happen, you're already kind of pissed off with it and not like paying attention. Because you're already like, oh god, this is stupid. Like, why the hell are they still recording? What? Yeah, there's there's some, um, as you said in the first review, there are some absolute stinkers. You know, don't worry, mm -hmm. I'm not going to drop one on you. But um, this new wave of found footage films, Paranormal Activity franchise, really did kind of, like we've saw with Blair Witch, a lot of really bad ones have come out. There's one called The Dinosaur Project. I was going to say, you could mention that one. Terrible! It's like... Um, Jurassic Park kind of thing mixed with paranormal, I can, uh, paranormal activity. I can see the kind of the thoughts mm. about it, but it was bad. It was really bad. And we've got a few of this as well. Yeah, I was going to say because that was like mixing um, CGI with the found footage effect, but it was like really badly done. One that did it a lot better, I think, is Grave Encounters. Um, there's a sequel to that as well. Which yeah. Where's this? I, I was talking about Oh, it's, it's still up on the shelf, don't worry. Oh, uh, but this is like a... Um, ironically enough for our next review, because we're going to do a similar story to this, 
Um, it's about a bunch of um, like ghost hunters who like may have their own show on like Cable. some 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 channel somewhere. Going to this haunted asylum and the taking, um, basically filming a show and shit kicks off while they're there, like genuine supernatural stuff. Um, some of the effects, especially in the first film, were seriously creepy. The girl in the corner where she just like turns around and her face just goes like, like that. And it's that, like, that is oh, something that I saw really when I went to bed at night, because I'm like, Jesus. Um, also, it has um, a very nice idea of well, why don't they just wait for morning? Why don't they just leave? They literally can't. Once they're in the asylum, the place just warps. Time and space have no meaning. It's always night. They can't go out. They go out through the front door and they're somewhere else in the same asylum. They literally cannot escape. It's a lot of nightmare concepts mm. in that as well, isn't it? Well, I say I, I was not as much of a fan of the second one because it spent way too much time following around the um, like stars of the second one who were just basically goofing off for like way too long. Yeah, those It's like, you could have just established that they're kind of high school kids who goof around a little bit. Ten minutes tops. I don't still need to be watching this like 30, 40 minutes later. Get to the bloody movie. Yeah, because I think it kind of suffered a bit in that the first one was a very independent um, film. I think the trailer really sold it on, on the... I think it says it on the front of the thing about the trailer having a lot of views. The second yeah, one, twenty-two like, million trailer views. Because you, there's some actors in the second one that you recognise. Uh, yeah, also the main actor, um, like the main like the documentary filmmaker who's doing the second one, is a fairly major character from the TV show Continuum. So immediately that took me right out of it. Cause it's like I know you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not a documentary filmmaker. You are an actor. I know you. Yeah. Uh, it's there's a little bit. Um, well. well, briefly, what well, we've already talked about. The other one we were going to mention was um, Apollo 18 for moving away from ghosts and into a more sci-fi um, kind of approach with Apollo 18, which was set on the moon, and the uh, Apollo mission that they've never admitted to. Um, I really liked this. Yeah, uh, a lot of people have slagged it off, but I thought it was quite good. Well, they did a marketing campaign mm. similar to Blair Witch with a website and also just stuff about... Um, was it Moontruth.com kind of mm. thing? So, um, Although, again, this did actually have an actor I recognised. One of the main guys, one of the main astronauts, was in the TV show Alphas. It's like, try and get like people we don't recognise. Uh, yeah, I know we've already um, talked about Cloverfield, and we're not going to go back over. We've already covered that as well as we're going to. Um, well, but we're going on about viral marketing. This also had... Um, Quite a bit of viral marketing. It was one of those like trailers that had everybody talking about it. Um, but also it had like fake websites for both the drink slush show, which is kind of advertised quite a few times, and the firm that the guy's going to work for. Um, it even had like phone numbers you could ring, um, and even had references to um, both the firm and the drink in um, some of J. J. Abrams' other works, like Alias had um, the Slusho Cola drink. And bizarrely enough, in um, Star Trek... 2009. Yeah. Uh, not not the original Star Trek. <laughs> that would be really um, bizarre. No, in the 2009 remake, which was also J.J. Abrams, um, Ahura, when she's ordering drinks at the barge before the fight scene breaks out, orders a Slusho. And um, there is apparently a building with the um, company logo for... Um, it's like a Japanese one. Isn't yeah, it? the Japanese um, company um, Taragato or whatever it is. Yeah, um, it's like seen in some of the TV spots for it. So there was quite a bit of viral marketing connected to this, and also a little bit like the Blair Witch Two thing. There were kind of like hidden Easter eggs throughout the film that if you kind of followed and looked into and like really studied some of the bits that are set before um, the actual attack. Because occasionally the footage will jump to stuff that was recorded on the video camera before. And you'll get stuff of like the like last days leading up to the attack. And you see things like um, 
like ships in the bay and like something falling from the sky and stuff. Lands in the water, doesn't it? Right, it's right at the end mm-hmm. where the credits start. Yeah, it's in the final scene where they're on the roller coaster and it's the very creepy kind of scene of where she turns to him and like says she's had a really good day when yeah. you don't know that they're dead, basically. Yeah. I remember the end credits, this kind of took me out of it. Mm. Um, it has like a musical score, like a big kind of um, orchestral kind of thing of the end credits. Because some of the films, kind of going back to Paranormal Activity, the particular first one didn't have opening or closing credits. That's mm. something that the, the you get very rarely with these, but Cloverfield did. Um, like I said, Cloverfield, yes, it was a fan footage film, but it was a very different beast. Yeah. It was like an interesting premise of let's do a monster film like Godzilla or something but let's do it from literally from the ground floor rather than having like the army being a big part of it and scientists it's just people trying to survive this monster attack it's not really about the monster so much as it about the struggle trying to survive the monster the monster might as well be a natural disaster really there's some like there's a lot of actors in this i recognize mm-hmm. some of them were just like bit part actors um but also there was um well, I actually remember watching a trailer for this as well, where there was a, the whole thing where there was a teaser where you see the Statue of Liberty's head get knocked off. I can't remember if it was you that I said this to, because I remember like saying like, uh, oh, as if you could like knock the head of the Statue of Liberty like that far out, you know, it's like way over there. And you're like, I'm pretty sure if you could knock the head off in the first place, who's to say you couldn't knock it off? <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. Um, um, there's a lot of speculation going in as to exactly what it would be. Some people saying, oh, it's like a it's secretly going to be a Godzilla film, which is like, it never yeah. was going to be. Isn't there a single frame in this, like near the end or something, where it, it cuts? Is it King Kong? Or, I think it's King Kong, actually, yeah, yeah not Godzilla. Um, that this, this in the frame where it suddenly gives you that um, belly nice. Yeah, another um, theory, which is kind of a shame it wasn't true, was that it was going to be um, based loosely on the works of H.P. Lovecraft and ultimately the creature smashing New York was going to be uh, the outer god Cthulhu, which... Would have been a really interesting technique because it would have opened up magic as well as monsters. And um, it's literally a monster where if you've read the works of H.P. Lovecraft, if you even see this giant monster, you're doomed because you'll just go insane. Um, you can't even look at this thing without like just completely breaking your mind. It's that horrific and out of the worldly. Um, but yeah, it's a good film for what it is. And like I say, again, we have the viral marketing. Uh, but I think this um, should come to the end here. Yeah, we could talk forever about like, some of the good and the bad ones. Most of the bad ones, because it tends to be what this genre. Yeah, like I say, that's not really what we're covering in this um, retrospective. We're covering some stuff that... We like. Yeah, it's it's had some effect on us that we've either enjoyed or we think is interesting. So hopefully you do as well. You're not thoroughly sick and fed up of us after four days. Yeah. I would call myself a fan mm-hmm. of the uh, found footage genre. I mean, I know there are, like, like we said, some absolute stinkers and some of them are just crap. So I was trying to... Uh, yeah, just be back. careful. <laughs> You've seen the smeg ups in the, the first video mm-hmm. that we did this week. Um, we yeah, some... our final um, review is going to tie into this in a little way because it's going to be another mockumentary about ghosts. And it will be coming tomorrow. And it's something... You may Shit not... us up as kids. Yes, yeah, it's something you may not be aware of um, if you weren't alive in the time. But if you were watching TV in um, 1992... It would have freaked you out. So scary, I don't even want to be in the shop while we're talking about it. <laughs> we are, of course, talking about Ghost Watch. Ghost Watch, 1992. I was, we were this like, was before um, any of that stuff. No Blair Witch. This wasn't taking off that. BBC did it first. They broke us as kids. <laughs> kids had to go to like, therapy and seriously for yeah. post-trauma stress. A lot of the other things we talk about, it's stuff we've heard, we found out about in the... Um, since then, like, the Alien Encounters thing. This we actually saw live, on TV. It was people we trusted, like Sarah Green, Michael Parkinson, yeah, Craig Mike... Charles out of Red Dwarf. Bastard! That smeghead! <laughs> yeah, what a bastard. <laughs> but we'll talk more about it tomorrow anyway. Yeah, it's... we're going to have quite a bit to say about this, because this is something that we both love as kids. And we've kind of been building up to it this week, so... Yeah, this is the reason we did this respect retrospective. Originally, we were just going to be like, hey, let's do a review of that for... Um, Halloween. And then it's like, well, when are we going to do uh, Blair Witch? Why do we do both? Let's do We're going to do three <laughs> reviews of us all. We'll do five and push it out. So, yeah, it aired on hey. Halloween, uh, August, not August, October 31st, 1992. So, tw- 22 years ago today. Yeah, it's this. to the point I can actually think back on that and I can remember, like, specifically 
where what was going on and so forth. It's almost like you know exactly what you're doing when the Kennedy assassination happened yes. or when the Twin Towers fell. I remember quite literally I know I was that night shitting myself, <laughs> exactly. sweating buckets. So I'm going to say and this is something that hasn't been repeated or shown again. It was very controversial at the mm-hmm. time, but we'll talk about this all tomorrow anyway because I can I can feel we, you can feel we really want to talk about yes. it. So yeah, <laughs> right, okay. So uh, tomorrow, check back. Yep, tomorrow, tomorrow Halloween, we will be back. Ronnextreviews.com. So uh, thank you very much for watching.